What is up, guys? Walla J here, and I'm here with my co host, Art of War. Hi. Yeah, negative. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, he's running a, como se dice, latte. But I have here with me producer Chris. Hola. Man, now we're starting the stream now. So we were late on the start. No, that's fine. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Uh, really? We're just doing the intros. Yeah. And also joining us is Red Sonia. Sherry. I'm a Red Sonia today? Yeah, well, you know, that's what I called you because it's like my favorite nickname that you were given by uh, Polar Bear. <laughs> I, I, I just didn't think that Matadora Roja kind of suited you. I don't know. I just didn't see you like a bullfighter. Not anymore. Why? Because I, mean, I don't even train that much anymore, I feel like. Well, you and never, when I do, I'm like well, scared. You never, you never killed any bulls, no. so um, como se dice? Yeah, no, no. I, I, I just, I just didn't see it. You know what I mean? Playa, yeah, I guess so. Jelly bean. Chris, we've been gone for two weeks. I know. What the fuck have you been up to? Nada, chilling, living the dream. Work. Were you Were you in uh, You know, on vacation again in Mexico? No, no. Uh, was, Drug oh, telling la- it. Last weekend we were in Atlanta. Uh, went and checked out the new place up there. You mean you mean your daddy's new mansion? Yeah, the new mansion. Uh, Seriously, you, I want to hide in that room. Did, <laughs> did you see it? <laughs> I, you showed when uh, when yeah. they were looking at it, and they were, before they put the offer on, you showed us, and yeah, perfect. Did uh, do you follow him on Facebook? I don't know. I should. Uh, yeah, I? I sh- you should because he posted a picture of his his truck, uh, his his baby truck. What do you mean, baby truck? He got like a little truck. No, no, or no. What? It's his baby. He's got a uh, 1960 Chevy steps. Uh, yeah, stepside uh, hot rod truck. Uh, nice. Yeah, ah. it's pretty nice. He does he take it, it to, to like car shows and shit? Uh, sometimes he does. I think he took it to Cafe and Octane this morning, which is a big car show they have in Atlanta. Uh, the th- every I think the first Sunday of the month. Um, it's a really cool show. It's uh, they have it in the parking lot of uh, the Atlanta Mall, and there are everything from Lamborghinis, Bugattis to people with their you know revved up little Rav fours, military Rav4. military trucks. Um, just it's a it's a really awesome little show that they literally just put together in a parking lot, uh, like starting three years ago. Man, I used to love Lamborghinis and Ferraris. I still and, love Lamborghinis. And, I mean. I do, but like if I had an option to own one, I don't think I would. The problem is, is like my fi- I have one vehicle that's always been my absolute favorite vehicle of all time, which is it's a NSX. Uh, I love it. NSX. Do you like the new one? Though, which I is do. Half electric. I you do. Know? I do like the new it one. It looks pretty pimp. They are amazing. The problem is, yeah, I can never own one. It's too expensive. No, that has nothing to do with it. What do you mean? I can't fit in one. Because <laughs> a friend of mine had one, he he actually owned one, and um, I can't I can't sit in the seat. My shoulders Weird. are too wide. Well, why don't you slim down, hanging bro? out the window? There's nothing slimming down. I'm too big. You literally have to be like five six one thirty to be able to fit in that car. Five six one thirty. Then you I'm screwed. To, you have to be small to fit in that damn. That car's also like a hundred grand. Mm-hmm. You can find some for around eighty seventy five. Oh seen yeah, some yeah, yeah. Hey, that, look. If it if that's it's real your, cheap, if it's your dream that's a vehicle, fucking condo. If it's your dream car, it's just like his parents' house, where he's like, it's only. Well, it's all about how you budget your life, shit like that. What's important? Yeah, let me let let me. I can budget every single dime I earn. And never get there. Yeah, let me let me budget. You'd be that, surprised. Let me budget that in a six. Maybe by like ninety years old, if I maintain the same or grew. Nah, Listen, that, that in a six better come with a shower, a closet. <laughs> Hey, hey, living room. There ain't no room to fit out of that. Because, <laughs> bro, I, I, could, I can't afford that. I yeah. mean, I would have to, like, hit the lottery or some shit like that. And even then, those cars are, like, considered supercars. Where mm-hmm. are you going to drive those cars around here so fast? Oh, I wouldn't drive it in Jacksonville at all. You, you would have to, like, take it to a track, mm-hmm. you know? Or I'd just, I'd just jump on the highways. I wouldn't drive it, like, like I wouldn't take it to the gym. Uh, I wouldn't take it through five points. I wouldn't take the fuck no. The roads are too bad. I'm yeah. not. I'm not chancing. Fucking well, even up even the highways are not all that fucking great. Ten is good. Ten. That's good. That's actually ten to Tallahassee. Uh huh. Be there. Ninety five to Miami. Be there in fifteen minutes. No, there's too much construction once you get down past four. Um. Yeah, that, that's a lot of shit there. Yeah, and ninety five. Yeah, but ninety five to Savannah is pretty smooth. 
Yeah, but you also have to deal with the cops in Cobb County. They don't fucking play around. Yeah, they don't. <laughs> you, you you be doing 75, they're pulling you over. Well, that's what's funny because I was actually talking to uh, Nick. What was it? I think Tuesday. Yeah. Because uh, he's driving up. He was driving up to Atlanta. He's doing uh, a week in Atlanta and then I think a week in Raleigh. Is there a convention up there or something? No, he's going up there to, uh, I think it's Ink and Dagger. Uh, it's a friend of his shop. They just remodeled their shop. So he's going up there for a week yeah. to see his new shop, hang out with his buddy. Um, do some, I think he's filled up for the week or he was filled up for the week except for like a Friday. So I think he's already headed towards Raleigh now. And I think in Raleigh, he's pretty well booked up at another friend's shop and then he'll be coming back down. But he was heading up 95 or yeah, he was heading up 95 to 16 to go to Atlanta. And he was asking me, which way do you go? I was like, nah, I go the other way, bro. Cause believe the cops on 75 aren't as bad as they are on 95. Yeah. So he's like, yeah, man, the cops are really bad out here today. I was like, yeah. South Carolina too. No, I've never. Well, yeah, I've driven through South Carolina, North Carolina's even. The thing I hate because I've actually got to go back up to Cary again in two months. But uh, Georgia, I don't mind. Florida, they keep the they keep the woods away from the road. Right. I mean, you've got like 50, 50 feet, you know, of space. Georgia, about the same thing. South Carolina, they don't give a fuck. They let the woods come right up to the highway, so you've got no vision if there's deers or anything. So Art said, "Get ways." You know, it tells you where the cops are. Here's what you need yeah, to whatever. do. Yeah, whatever. Get your ass over here is yeah. what you need to do. Yeah. Waze is actually saying don't, don't worry about Don't worry about the podcast until you get here. Keep your eyes on the road, mister. Keep the, your eyes on the road. There's been some neighborhoods that are actually, uh, they've tried to sign some petitions to get ways to eliminate their roads from their navigation. Why? Because if there's a wreck on a highway or, you know, because Waze will tell you, hey, there's a wreck here. Yeah. Oh, yeah go redirect you and... this way. Right. Well, it redirects you back roads through neighborhoods and stuff like that to miss it. And these people are complaining because now their their neighborhoods are getting a lot more traffic of people dodging stuff on highways. This was happening over in California. People were complaining because, you know, the highways over there are always fuckered up. What are they going to do? Sit in there f- yeah, they, they don't hours ca- on they don't tra- care. Like, in they traffic? Don't care. They don't care. They don't come through our neighborhood. Oh. Yeah, that's that's their kind of stance. And it's like, mm, it's a public Fucking highway. California. It's a public road. So, I yeah. don't need a GPS Self to find the road either. This is my road. This is my neighborhood. Yeah. Don't come through here. Don't come through here. You guys are black anyway. Yeah. So. Or Hispanic. Or Hispanic. <laughs> None of that through our neighborhood. Nope. Don't, don't you know this is Brentwood? Yeah. Fuck. We're talking We're talking about taking I – w- I want to take a trip out to California, but I don't want to go into – Southern California. I want to go up north and northern California. It's pretty. Yeah. I want to go up, you know, Hobolt County, stuff like that. Sacktown. Is it Sacramento North? Yeah. Okay. Then, yeah. Places like it's that. It's mid-north. Is it? Sa- uh, San Francisco. Go see your peoples. No. I've never been to. The Chinese people? Dad likes San Francisco. No, is it? There's one of the Chinatown. cities. There's one of the cities. And he the gays. He loves. Yeah, the gays. No, I want to go to the one where you have to use that new app on your phone to show you where the homeless have shit on the sidewalk. (laughs) No, you can just go down to Phillips and Sunbeam, and they do it right there. Yeah, that's what that was was funny. The uh, the Puerto Rican restaurant that I went to in Orlando. Yeah, uh, leaving there and getting trying to get back to four to come home. We're going through, and where you're going through, it's like liquor store, gun, pawn shop, liquor store, strip club, pawn shop, pawn shop, liquor store. Oh, my God. I'm in the hood. Oh, that you, sounds like Alaska. Well, it's <laughs> it's funny because Amanda was like, this is just like a really long Phillips Highway. Because, I mean, it's yeah. just really long to get all the way to four from there. Well, Phillips, like, Phillips runs from fucking downtown, from downtown all the to, way to St. Augustine. Yeah. Yeah. But it's only shady in that spot, like from downtown to, I'd like say, Emerson-ish University. Like ish and yeah. Yeah. Listen, I used to hang out at Emerson. Gator Lodge. Did you? Back in the day. Yeah, bro. It's JRs, then there's Wackos. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's usually where we go count the hookers. This is, this is like, what, fucking 15 years ago, 20 years ago, when we were out partying almost every night? Wait, hold on. I'm 40. Still now. I'm 42, so I was 26. So yeah, about 15 years ago. Okay. Yeah. It yeah. it was like we we would go to a club or whatever, and my buddy be like, "Man, this shit is dead. Let's go to the strip club." We used my, to go to Michael Wackos. Salinas, my boy. We used to go to uh, Wackos for lunch sometimes. For what? Because they had lunch. Because the journeyman that I was with, I was an electrician, and I was just a helper, and that was his thing. He always wanted to go to Wackos for lunch, so he could you know see the girls and stuff like that. So I was. I'm, I'm in the van. I, I got no choice. That's where I'm going. 
day strippers? Come on. Yeah. That's the bottom of the barrel. When oh, you're, yeah. Well, he, when, you're work, when you're working the day shift at a strip club, yeah, you, you're not that good looking. Mm-mm, you no. ain't making that much money. No. You better go to like Chili's or something and, and, and start waitressing because yeah. you're going to make more money there. You probably will. But shit. yeah, he loved that shit. All you have to do is just be nice to people and they'll tip you nice. Mm-hmm. You don't have the body for it. You're working that day shift. You ain't making shit. No. It's like, give me the hamburger or that meatloaf with the hair. and. <laughs> but what's bad is any, I've been to some strip clubs Let's... where, like, the night shift, the, the night shift girls were just as bad as the day shift girls. Oh, well, that's not a good strip club. Well, it's the one up here by on the north side by uh, Hazard Bush. The Callahan girls? No. no they may come it's that way. It's because they were all related. <laughs> Probably. I did get to watch a girl. They were all missing a chromosome. She uh, she tried to do a little trick on the pole and do a little flip and all like that. She smashed her face. She smashed her face in the light bar <laughs> above and then fell off the pole and smashed her face again. <laughs> that was rough. Because our friend was the DJ. So we would go up there and just kind of hang out with him. And we're sitting in the booth. And, dude, she, like, spun and you heard the crash. We're like, Is that oh. where Rick Floor got his ass beat? No, that's uh, 747. That's oh, okay. Never mind. They were showing that uh that thirty for thirty Ric Flair again. The oh, were they? Yeah. I still have not watched that, bro. One. Like it's like you cannot stop watching it. Seriously, I'll, I'll grab it on Netflix. L- like it's not on Netflix. Are you sure? Yeah. Most of the thirty thirty for thirties are. No. Nope. Really? Uh, I think it's going to be on the new ESPN app. Uh, the one that the UFC is going to. Yeah, <laughs> I, th- I think it's like four ninety nine a month. Not happening. I'm. A, I'll keep. <laughs> I'll keep my fight pass. And yeah. now, supposedly, from what. Um, Eddie on the Fight Companion, they were talking about. That he was told that you know nothing's changing for Fight Pass. Okay. So we'll so see. So you still have your EBIs and yeah, shit like that. Yeah. So nothing's changing for that. But I think they're going to be ESPN will be getting some of like the uh, the Fight Nights. Yeah, Friday Night Fight Nights. And I so think now you're going to have to pay for them. And I think you're going to get. I think they said that ESPN was getting like six pay per views. No. I don't know. No, you no. Said something the the pay per views are still going to be pay per views. So no, unless they unless they do just like an instead of a Friday night fight now it's like ESPN's got its own. I don't understand why they did the fights on Friday uh, this past weekend. I don't either because I totally missed them. I thought they were Saturday night, bro. I I I was tired. I went to bed like around ten. I was looking for. Yeah, it. you just had to watch Lauren lose, and then you're good. Oh, I was I was <laughs> like, I, I texted Sherry. I'm like, Sherry, your girl's fighting. I hope she doesn't win. See, I said doesn't win. I, I, I said, know. I said I didn't say I hope she loses or I, or I hope she gets knocked out. I just said I hope she doesn't win. That's all. Yeah. That's what, what was I the said. fight like? Like I don't even know how she lost decision. She, or? Decision, yeah, yeah. I wasn't watching. Why, why weren't you keeping up with your girl? I only met her once. She's best friends with a girl I worked with in Alaska. <laughs> so y'all are homies. Yeah, they're super tight. <laughs> super tight, like super this. Tight. Like this. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, I saw the fight and uh, I was, uh, yeah, we'll knock on the door, bro. We're we're doing a podcast, you know. What's what's uh, Amanda's downstairs? She'll open the door for you. Maybe. <laughs> um, I, I watched the fight and it it just took me back to the show, like how she came oh, across. Yeah. And I'm like, man, I, I just maybe maybe she's a super nice lady. You know, maybe she's she's really cool. But after watching the show, it's just like... Don't care. No. <laughs> I don't care. Like, her attitude was just, you know, shitty. You know? But the the funny thing is, is okay, so her attitude's shitty, but she doesn't get memed like Mackenzie does. Because, like, after Mackenzie's fight, the memes were... Uh, oh, that was funny. <laughs> fucking hot. Well, how do, you, how, do you come, how, how do you come seven pounds overweight? Well, not you only do that, that, and then you're almost a, another weight class. And then have to have shit translated in English and Portuguese when you're fucking American. I hear him. I hear yeah. him. Well, the best part was I love the... Uh, Star adjusting the, his levels. The edit uh, with uh, Colin McGregor kind of thing so go sit your ass right over there yeah just sit well, you, got li- you got literally you got literally you got freedom all day I don't, give <laughs> don't give a shit you literally you got one hour to do this hey man it's not my fault i had to work bro hey you gotta work gotta work hey you guys give me an hour i hear i hear no 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 see i hear excuses no. 130 i was like no 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 see 
I said, does that work? And all you had to say was, no, no, that doesn't work. It did work. Look, you guys are no, here now. No, yeah, no, no, no. no. And, negative, then, and then you forgot my voice meals. Yep. No, they told me that you were coming to get them because I asked nope. them specifically. Negative, sir. Negative. And Andrew came in. He's like, no, Chris Negative, is coming sir. to get his meals. I was like, Go ahead. Then. Your, your mic's up, Bert. Like, so, no, I didn't forget shit. Yeah. I asked him specifically. So, you got Chris's meals? They're like, oh, he's coming. Were, to get well, were like, you sure. on the chat? And then Andrew came in and said, were you on the chat? I'm just telling you what they told me when I got there, which was after that Bro. fucking chat. Okay. All right. Come on. Okay. Get, get your levels. already fucking working all day. God damn it. Get, 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 get his levels. Yeah. So, he can, so people can hear him, uh, you know, defend himself. Right. Well, fuck, I'm not defending myself. Fuck you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, man. I had, I had to do fucking work. And after this, I'm going to go see my mom. So I don't want to hear any shit about this. Okay. Boo. Hi, Art. How are you? We're well, fucking <laughs> worked up now, God damn it. Hey, welcome to our world. Yeah. It's not my fault you have some shit to do at 3, 3 o'clock, 3.30. That's fine. We'll leave at 3, 3 o'clock, 3.30, whatever. No, he doesn't get it. No. no. That's fine. So anyway. I don't get it. I don't know what the fuck you guys are talking about. I'm it's walking fine. in just getting attacked like, yo, fuck you. I'm like, what? Fuck me. Fuck you. Nobody Who's said fuck Nobody you? said fuck you. Oh, well, that's God. how I take it when I haven't ate in fucking 12 hours. Oh, well, that's not her fault. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Well, it's not my fault. I'm just saying. <laughs> that's how I am. That's how I am. You guys know this. You guys know this. I gets a little honey. And he's going to have some mics. On an empty stomach. No, first off, it's not Mike's, it's Crunk Juice. Whatever. Okay. Right. So, <laughs> Deadpool blood. It's Mango. Hey, Bert. What's up, bud? How are you? And How I went you? and got Bert. What the fuck? You guys should see. Hey. I offered, just so that it's clear, I offered, did you have enough time to do both? Oh, yeah. Anyway. It's on the way. I had to go to San Jose, pick up the food, know, grab her, drop my house off, change all this fucking uniform, potty my dogs, take care of my mom's like phone call thing. Camera's right on over here. It's not like you live fucking far, brother. You live far. Okay. It is what it is. So it takes me a little time. It's like forty five minutes. I, I got off. I got. Off, I was supposed to get off at twelve thirty, but the military doesn't really work like that. <laughs> so they say you're gonna get off at twelve thirty. And then it's really like 12.45. Hey, next time. And to be honest, I got out way early, so I'm not even complaining. Well, I think I'm the stuck. best thing for next time is in, once we've already Instead discussed the time, time we, we don't change it. it. That's just, my fault. I'll yeah. take I'll we'll take responsibility we'll, for that it's one. Not, it's not anybody's fault, man. We're just, no, no, no. We're just trying to get some it, shit done. We got a bunch of stuff to do. I got stuff to it do is my after fault. this That's anyway. Right. So this, this, this worked out for me, even though I'm late. But we can still a podcast. Hey, guys, we're still podcasting for an hour and a half, man. You can listen to us bullshit, dick jokes, all that. Wackos. The fuck? <laughs> the Wacko's food sucks, by the way. My brother took me there because he had some friends who might have worked there or whatever that he might have been dating. But I'm just saying, <laughs> Chris, the food I'm, wasn't that great. Did you I'm, like the food there? No. I mean, I'll tell you where the food is good in the strip club, right? Sugars over in Texas. But all the tex- Texas um, strip clubs are way better anyways. Like is these it, are multi-million dollar Is clubs. it because they don't have hair on their brisket? Oh. Did you have hair on your brisket? I don't know. Oh. <laughs> yeah, he ate no. it too fast. No, it was way better. No. So, like, so on, uh, I think it was uh, uh, Sugar Tuesdays, it was $5 military, military appreciation, and that would buy you a steak dinner with, like, a roll, a salad, and a beer. So, my one buddy, did I ever tell you guys about this before? No. So, I was over, I was over doing my C-School over there. What is a C school? C school is like uh, it's like a specialty school. So I'm an orthopedic technologist. So I went there to the Army Academy to do this in Texas. In Texas, San, San Antonio. San Antonio, yeah. Okay. And uh, so, <laughs> so like this one guy always broke, man, always broke. But I had a vehicle and I was a fleet returnee. So I mean, like I, you know, what I mean, I was able to get off base and all that stuff. And he's like, he's like, hey man, you gonna go to Shugs? Or I, I would ask him like if you want to come train or hang out or do whatever, and he's like, nah, man. Was, he's like, I'm broke. I was like, oh, okay. He's like, but I got five bucks for Shugs on Tuesday. So every Tuesday we going out getting a steak and a beer and you know a nice big fat dinner roll, some salad. I don't know. Some, a five dollar steak boobies. just doesn't sound. No, salad. listen, no, listen. It was amazing. This food was so good. And like Sugars was like a strip club, but it was also like a, a sports bar at the same time. So there's like TVs everywhere. So, not that I watch sports, but these guys really dug it. I was like looking at booties and boobies and eat my steak. Hello, who do we have on the line? Yeah, I want to talk to you. Okay, I'm Joe Pat Karate, formerly number one manliest fucking podcast, and you think you are the fucking nut? Is this the Iron Sheik? That you are not. Fuck you! Fuck you! It's the Iron Sheik. Wait, no, he wait. He's he's, he's, no he's Joe Pat Karate. <laughs> you have nothing. You guys have no dick. 
Are you, you having a no fight with ball. yourself, good you friend? You are fucking Ken dog. You are flat in the middle, you fucking <laughs> no. pussy. You're flat in the middle. <laughs> oh, this is the guy that had the podcast. We he had a podcast and we dethroned him. I have black. He, oh, yeah, yeah. He, he, he had the I number. The most manliest podcast. Right. I don't even know how to fucking spell it. Hey, how many downloads are you getting now, buddy? What? Yeah, like 10? You're probably getting like what? You're not fucking that dude. I'm handicapped. He's handicapped? What? I'm sorry that you're. I'm fucking handicapped. <laughs> <laughs> Oh shit, man! Listen, I'm so sorry. Do you know what we should do? You're we should have you on our shit. podcast. Yeah, we should have you on a good podcast. Yeah, on our our podcast, not that shitty shit you do. And we can we can no, make up. Chris, I'm to you because I want to mm. fucking kill your podcast because it's not as Chris. good as my podcast. What? My I, podcast, we mm-hmm. talk about life, liberty, how to make pottery, all make types pottery. of good shit. You're fucking useless. Uh, I don't know. He I, makes the pottery so he can kick it in his Pax Karate. Yeah, he. You uh, say your Pax Karate? Because I think I think I think I know who Pax Karate is. I don't I think you're Joe it. Pac. He's Joe Pac. Oh, Joe, Joe Pac. Pac. Oh, I was gonna say I don't think I don't think you're a representative of Pax Karate. I'm pretty sure they might be uh, like you know. Listen. I think he's crying. He's crying. <laughs> Listen, uh, we're sorry that we dethroned you and that your podcast really sucked. But well, again, we'll have you on our podcast so you can, you know. No, 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 no. We can't have him on our podcast. No, no, no. no. Think about it. We, need we don't to- want our podcast to suck. This guy has a virus. We can't have him here. Your podcast is something I fuck. It's like a Kotex commercial. Fuck your fucking podcast. What's a Kotex? Oh, is that like a <laughs> I'll just, just pull the string, sir. It'll come right out. Press. Let me let me ask. How, how, how much drinking have you done? Whenever he does the, the yeah yeah, it makes me think of that ninja fruit game that's on the oh. on the thing. Yeah 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 yeah. How much drinking have you done today, sir? I don't think it's drinking. That's called coke. Oh, are you on cocaine? The you on the yay yo? <laughs> well, well, why don't you come over here so we can give you a hug? Oh, you got no! I come here, you come here! Come here! Well, all right, Mister Mister Iron Chick, we'll let you go. And uh, next time, next next time we see you, just come over and say hi. You know, we'll kick your ass. Hey, not only do you. You suck at karate hey, and your the, podcast hey, sucks. Hit that red button. Goodbye, sir. You hit that. Oh, <laughs> oh. I'm sorry, guys. That guy was a little. I mean, I came in pretty hot, but that guy was really hot. Like he must have been like not eating for like two days. Um, uh, yeah, and, uh, he, he was a little wired some up. Sort of venereal disease, I think, probably got him crazy that's the, the fact that he knows kotex kind of bothers me but <laughs> yeah that's kind of weird hey so check this out he, he's I probably got like, a heavy flow i was in such a i was in such of a uh rush I, I didn't even get my flip-flops i don't even know where these came from i think i use these <laughs> in the yards in case dog poop Who, well i mean then they're Put yours. Them on the table no i'm just kidding <laughs> but no these are like little you know what? i remember when i bought these actually i was heading over to the training yard and i forgot my flip-flops and, uh, you stopped at Walgreens. I did. Well, no, it was like Target or some sort of. It, no, it was. It was like, like a Publix, but like a cheap Publix. And the I think I got these for like a cheap Publix. What's a cheap Publix? Cheap, like like a like they, a they knockoff Publix. And it was like eight bucks. Okay. Is I Chris mean, giving us the silent treatment? Maybe not. No, um, he's he's not interested just, at all. I'm, I'm checking stuff. Are you making money? Yeah. Yeah. I'm because I tell you what, I'm not making money on. Bitcoin? God damn Bitcoin. I can't even get on my account damn, anymore. Bitcoin. I think that just died. I think it was no, like... A, it's still I, there. It's still there, I but it's like s- way less than when I bought it. So it's like I have $553 in it at point zero seven of a Bitcoin. Where <laughs> You had three grand in there at one point. No, 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 no. no. That was uh, that was my Litecoin and my um, Ethereum, which I already, I already pulled that out. Bless you. 
Yeah. <laughs> there was a sign um, at a store on Beach Boulevard yesterday that says they accept Bitcoin. There's a lot of places that do still. It's crazy. There's yeah. no money there. Well, you say there's no money there, but one coin is like $7,000 still. Yeah. So it's from, from what, 19? It's only down from yeah, like. It got up to about it 18, was, 19. It was at 19. It did so it lost more than half of its value. Yeah, but it's Why would way you more it? than a dollar for a Depending coin. Depending on when you bought it, it lost. Yeah. Some people are still up. Oh, man. I don't know. I mean, it's still it's still up for the year. It's just down this month. Yeah. I mean, and that's another thing, too. Like, so, like, when it comes to stocks or anything like that, and you got to realize money is relative when it comes when it comes to the amount, right? So, like, what's a lot to me is definitely not a lot to, like, let's say Chris's dad. Chris's parents. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know what like, I mean? So, they could, they could be like, yeah, we got $5,000 in Bitcoin at that time, and, you know, we're at a loss right now. But they can just sit on that, and it's not hurting them. And just wait till it comes right back up, and then they'll go ahead and sell or switch it out to other uh, electric currencies and kind of move from there. But, hey, guys, real quick. Um, cause I know, you know, because of schedule and everything else, I'm so sorry, um, uh, that we didn't have a whole lot of time, but I wanted to talk about something. All right. And I Shoot. thought it was kind of crazy. Uh, I was listening to Joe Rogan podcast when he was talking to Kevin and more into the mic though. When he was talking to Kevin yeah. and, uh, so, you know, Kevin, Kevin who? Uh, Smith? Smith. Okay. So, you know, they talked about his heart attack and that was pretty crazy. Right. But what really, you know, what, what, what was crazy to me is it's the first time ever that I've seen. Uh, Joe Rogan actually get choked up talking about his uh-huh. puppy. Ah, uh, he cried, bro. Down. Yeah, he cried. They both did. They both did. And yes. listen, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want to say I cried, but there was some moisture in my eyes. Like, like when I saw that, I was like, you know, some heavy most moisture. Well, this is the deal, right? Like, you know, so we look at these people that are like super successful. They have all this kind of money or whatever, and and to see them humanized in this kind of way, like. You know, just talking about it, the kind of feelings that come up and like it just – it was – that was crazy to me. So I was like, whoa. You know, he's crying over this puppy and he's like, yeah, I'm really bummed over the dog. You know what I mean? But – It's then a dog. Talking, Hell yeah. Then he, yeah. Then he ended up start, start talking about that veterinarian and like – so like that dude definitely had a profound effect on Joe. Yeah. And uh, – Well, they were friends. Yeah. Well, And yeah. he was he was older. So he was kind of like a little – Almost like, like a mentor. mentor yeah. Style. Yeah. So that's – so that was pretty crazy to me. I was like looking at that and then that, you know, I rehashed, you know, cause I have animals and stuff like that. And I've had animals that pass away and I'm like, man, how crazy is that? So <laughs> what even fires me up even more is like, so I'm flipping through Facebook. I, you know, fake news, but I do see this one bullshit. Dude, what's going on with your knuckles? Oh, those are your, that's the, <laughs> whew, thank God. All right. I thought that was like gangrenous, but there's just <laughs> no polish. Anyways. So, uh. And I see this stupid fucking person holding a dog down and another dude hit it with a torch. <sighs> and the, the, the animal's alive. I'm like, what the f-? I'm like so fired up, dude. I've been fired up uh, all day because I listened to that this morning going over to, to, to training. Fix the mic. I listened to that this morning going over to training. Yeah. And, uh, and then, you know, having those kind of like emotions in my head. I'm wondering, like, do you guys feel the same way? Like, you have certain events in your life that is putting you in a certain state and then you see something else and just like – Fucking triggers you. I don't know. Like, like I if I could have seen that shit, th- like I would have probably had to like shoot that person or hurt him. Or, or I, I, I see that stuff online, and and I'm afraid of what I would do if I was there. Yeah, I really. Just, when I put Buster down, what like two months ago? Yeah, it was like all I saw were those fucking videos of like dog abuse and yeah. burning, and I just I had to deactivate Facebook for a couple of days. It was just too much. Well, you know what's really good though. Is that that you realize that you are able to provide a better life for for your for your animal that a lot of these animal and people all over the world, you know what I mean, don't get and like and that's another thing too is that like I've been trying to put a lot of stuff in perspective lately uh, when it comes to like conflict, you know, like personal conflict that you have with with you and somebody else and so on and so forth and what you think is important, what actually is really really important. You know, and I got brought back down to earth when I told you guys that story when I was over in Germany. is taking care of that guy, so on and so forth. Remember, remember talking about the amputee, yeah. the amputee and all that stuff. And, and how, like, all the little stuff, I just stopped sweating. Like, spilling a big, big thing of uh, smoothie in the middle of my console to my BMW at that time normally would have sent me through the roof. But to, at that point, I was just like, it's not the end of the world. I'm just going to clean this thing up. It'll be fine. It'll be okay. So on and so forth. Right? But I feel myself. Falling back now that I'm back here, and and you guys maybe haven't had that experience to understand the difference or whatever, or maybe you have, I don't know. Um, that I'm falling back into that that pettiness, that that uh, 
that this is the biggest, most catastrophic thing in the world. But really, it's not. Like, whatever it may be. Like, someone say something bad about me. Like, ah, Nobody so says angry. anything bad about no, you. No, what I'm saying, what I'm saying. Like, so someone says something bad about me. Ah, or somebody, <laughs> somebody tries to do something, like, you know, to make me mad, you know, like a message or something like that. You know what I mean? I just have to remember that that. That is not what's important in life. That like that little like petty little thing right there, that shouldn't affect me even and I'm letting it affect me lately. And so I'm trying to like pull myself back. I don't know how you guys are how you guys do it. I, I keep referring back to you because I want you to understand this experience and and, and and think when someone pisses you off, like really is it that why did they do that? You know what I mean? What's their goal? Like is it really gonna affect you? You know what I mean? And if it does really affect you, like, how how do you think you you should handle that? Like, me, I want to fly out the handle and fucking shoot the dude. Or choke him or whatever whatever may happen. My lawyer says I can't say shoot the dude anymore. <laughs> well. Because I talk too much. I, uh, well, I might run him over accidentally. There, there's there's a lot of things that I just, you know, be like, whatever, fuck you. I don't, I, I ain't even going to worry about it. But when I do see that shit of animals being abused. That really pisses me off, and, and I do want to hurt somebody. I want to hurt those people that are hurting those dogs. You know, I've, I see it too much on Facebook. It's like, you know, in China, they have like this, this you know. Dog I, festival thing? Th- like a dog festival yeah. where, where they kill a bunch of dogs, and those dogs are so scared that, that they kill them while they're scared because they say the adrenaline that they're going, you know, that is flowing through their body makes the, the meat even better. And I'm like... You fucking pieces of shit. Well, see, if you talk to any hunter, they don't want that adrenaline running through the animal's body because it ruins the meat. So I, I call bullshit on that. Yeah. I call bullshit on that. You want to do you want to do the kill as humanely as possible. Now, listen, man. Well, you, you I'm should not, be killing I'm, a dog anyway. Well, well, listen, I, I agree. And I, and I realize that other cultures fucking have – Fucking savages. I realize other cultures have, have different like views on stuff. Now, fuck them. I agree. But – if you're going to kill something and eat it, like it's sustaining you and your family, whatever, you need to do it as humanely as possible. It is what it is. Like people throw that same argument at us, right? Well, why are you going to kill a pig? They're just as intelligent as a dog. They like, they have emotions. They have so on and so forth. And they actually do. And actually, like I think there's like some sort of scientific study to where we actually have more common genes with a pig than we do like uh, a chimpanzee or some bullshit like that. Don't quote me, but they I think do I'm use, pretty sure. Like pig aortas and stuff and body that's what parts. I'm, that's what I'm saying. Like there's a lot of like our DNA is closer to pig than it is. And actually I think that's why they call cannibals call human meat actually long pig. I don't know if you heard that before. Uh-uh, I know. Yeah, that so so like cannibals would call, you know, the other white meat, which is us. Maybe I should pig. just tip eating meat then altogether. You know, I want to do that, but there is so much work into it that you – it is really, really hard. Like, And you guys know you've heard me talk about my friend Sarah before who is a vegan. Um, the amount of prep and work that she has to do to do that and stay healthy, especially if you're active, like you're training. You need that protein. It is rough. It's hard to it get enough rough. protein from plants. I, I get, she, I mean, I get it, do but, it, but you know, every meal that she's thinking, she's like, how do I get more protein in? I'll tell you what. Bioavailable protein. Dean, Dean went full vegan. Yeah. And he doesn't seem to be missing anything. You know, he's as strong as ever. He's healthy as ever. Besides the broken toe. Yeah. He, yeah broken toe. <laughs> but it's like the, the more the, – I don't know, man. It, I, I, I agree that, you know, if we're going to eat meat, we should be conscious that, you know, these – like you said, it, it sh- the animals shouldn't even notice, you know. Yeah. So, you know, like slaughterhouses and all that shit, factory farming, you know, yeah, that that kind of stuff. I don't want to support that. No, you know, well, they I, need to do it as humanely as possible. I, I, I get it. I mean, I'm a meat eater. I'm going to eat that. I'm going to eat. Yeah. But you, they have to do it humanely, man. You can't just like slaughter and like have it like in the throes of death and dying for minutes at a I time. Guess, I guess if we're eating meat, we can't be that hypocritical and say, well, I want you to kill the animal a certain way. No, no, you that's know? not hypocritical. No, I'm saying like the meat that I want to consume. It kind of is I because wanna, we're no, eating it. So I don't know. I don't mind that the animal died. I what I mind is how they died. I do I want them strung up and freaking out and cut their throat and they're bleeding out and dying for like fucking minute at a time? No, no, that's traumatic as shit. Can you do a bolt at the back of the at the back of the head? You know what I mean? Where like it just kills the brainstem and then boom, they're done. It shut lights out quick. That way, it's humane. It's it's painless as possible and, and you know they die quick it's humane you know um i don't know i think we should have dean on the on the podcast i think we should 
uh, unfortunately, on Sundays, it's not good for him. So maybe we'll figure figure out a Saturday or something, or, or maybe mic- like a or maybe like a late Friday or something like that. Well, maybe sometime. There's a lot going on. You got the school, you know. Yeah. F- Saturdays, you know, he's running the open mat. I don't know. Maybe in the afternoon. That's in the morning. Yeah, we had the afternoon or the night. Maybe I'll talk to him and see when he wants to come on. But you know, the the more I hear about this shit, it's like I don't know. It's kind of you know, fuck. Do I want to be part of that? But uh, at the same time, it's like I do love me, so I guess I shouldn't have an opinion, and I shouldn't just say, "Well, this is how I want my animal to be killed." You know? Why not? I, I don't know. It's just a, it's, that's just how I feel. You know? I mean, I think if you I, are I, eating meat, you absolutely should have an opinion on it. Like, if you're not eating meat, yeah. then you shouldn't have an opinion on it. Uh, maybe I think it's you're the right. other way around. Like, if you're involved in it, then you should be involved in it and understand where and why and how and. Yeah. You know what I mean? If you're not eating meat, then I don't think you should have a voice in the opinion. You should have a voice in, you know, how your greens are growing. Other than that. True. He makes a good point. What do you think, Chris? You've been quiet. I like meat. Me too, buddy. Good old he's, steak. He's like, I don't care where he, where, where he was killed. Man, I have no yeah. I have no qualms with the animal dying. Like I said, I just want to make sure that it's done humanely. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, there's no reason to cause unnecessary torture for an animal to die. There's no reason. Like, that. Yeah. Like those dogs. Like, listen, man, I understand other countries, they eat things that we consider pets. And we eat things that other people consider sacred, like cows. In India, yeah. right? You know what I mean? And and cows, and you know, they're very affectionate social creatures as well. You know what I mean? So it's like, fuck, bro. You know what I mean? What are you saying? I can't have steak anymore? I mean, it's just tasty. Um, <laughs> I've always and, had issues eating, like, growing up. There was cows at the end of the street, and then all of a sudden I noticed they were gone, and we had a bunch of meat all of a sudden in the freezer. And yeah. it was like, where did that come from? And my parents told me oh, it was Fred, and it was Flintstone. And I'm like, oh, and I wouldn't eat it. Like, if I saw it, like fish too, if yeah. I see the actual thing, I can't eat it. Well, we're totally detached from how our food is done because it's nice and, neat, nice and neat and processed and already in a package or it's already cooked for us, and, and we eat it. You know, We don't think about where it comes from. And, and this has been hit uh, – this subject has been hit on by many different – like social media platforms and stuff like that, but it is an important one. So I think I think it's worth mentioning again for sure. I don't know. You just you know, see, seeing. I, I guess I, I was out of line calling them savages because you make a point of hey, they they eat other stuff that we consider pets. Well, the, but, the but, ones that are blowtorching dogs while they're alive are savages. Those are fucking. Those there's people something need to be wrong blowtorched. with them. There's something wrong with them. Like Man. think about it. You don't have any empathy. Like what kind of empathy do you have? I know. Like, I can look at somebody who's going through a really rough time, dude, and I will start feeling emotional. Like, because I can empathize with the way that they feel. I can put myself in their shoes. It fucks I mean? my day up when I see shit like that. Yeah, for sure. The whole day. And uh, there's you know? this guy. Uh, he's uh, one of um, – he's up in uh, New York. His name is oh, – well, on Facebook. He's Chi Aces. I don't yeah. know. I don't know if you know who he is. But, you know, he's one of – he's he's – BJJ guy from I think he's Henzo's, and you know he he rescued this pit bull that was left on the side of the road out to die wow. because he looked like he was apparently you know being used for fighting. Yeah, and he from the moment that he got it, he started posting pictures. He's like, this is what people do to dogs and shit like that. And I've seen what he's done with this dog. He's like he's taking it from being on the brink of death to now a healthy, beautiful dog. Wow. And this is in a matter of like three months. So every time he posts a picture or a video of the dog, I'm like, 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 you know, I'm there, you know, following what he does. And it's what, crazy. Those quick turnarounds. On at the same out, time, right? he posts, you know, he wants to bring awareness because obviously he, he doesn't like that shit either. He posts these horrible videos, you know, of people in China and other countries, you know, you know, doing all this shit to the dogs. And it's like, I just want to bring awareness to people that this is what's going on. And it's got like a petition. Yeah, for sure. For you to sign. But I'm wondering, like, what the fuck does that do? I know. That I, I, do? I, I, I don't know. I don't know what he does. Well, I'm signing this petition. I'm like, okay, what the fuck is that good to do over in China? Yeah. I just rather them stop sharing the fucking pictures and putting these people... I mean, I mean, they're almost getting famous a, is, for it. If there, but if there's a what, way what that can, we can stop it. What I mean, can I do? say do yeah, that. But I mean, what can we do? I mean, I'm sure there's world organizations that can try to step in and do something. I hope so. But I, hope so. I mean, what, just do what's it's fun, right, man. It's like, funny because in certain parts of China, you have that, that going on. But in Tibet, they have a festival 
for the dogs as you know this is your your best friend this is man's best friend yeah. right and they have a full festival for them they, they don't and you know it's like yeah you're part of this country that you know tortures at you know these dogs and you eat them but you mean to tell me that this little section you know of your country sees it a different way yeah, well, Tibet like can, they consider themselves separate well, they're, from China, right? They're they're in the China middle like of doesn't the, recognize it. Yeah, I want to no. say I mean I'm a little rusty on that portion of the history for over in the east, but I think that's the case. Like Tibet's like, yo, we're our own people, free Tibet type thing. Yeah. And China's like, yo, you're not your own people, you're us. Yeah, I could be wrong. Maybe I don't know. You know, I, I don't know. You brought this up, and now my 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 day my day shit now. Your day shit now. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, man. I'm thinking about it, this shit now, and I want to I want to go hurt somebody. Well, it's 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 rough, right? You know what I mean? Like, how do we how do we channel and handle those feelings? You know what I mean? Like, do we do we let it ruin our day? Do we become an activist somehow, some way, and and, and try to make a difference? You know what I mean? I volunteered at the Humane Society over here at Clay, yeah. and uh, I can tell you right now, even under the most humane, these are big fucking air quotes here, conditions, that it is rough, dude. I can't handle it anymore. Um, when I got my dog, Ruby, uh, uh, actually, Nicole brought it home and was like, yo, this dog, it was a bag of bones. Like, I didn't know what kind of dog it was. It was ugly as fuck. It was so small. Yeah. And uh, I was like, well, what the hell? You know what I mean? So, you know, that first night, it brought it into the bed with me, you know what I mean? And and I call it it at that time, right? Because it just didn't even look like a dog. It was just bones and like no fur and it's black it was just horrible big big floppy ears and after we uh fed it and 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 got her looking better and feeling well we found out that 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 person that dropped the dog off uh because they found it as a stray wanted to come back and take the dog you know what i mean because and that's a pretty common thing too is that they'll drop off an animal that they abused or neglected they'll get it healthy and they'll come back and take the dog away for whatever reasons could be bait dog could be so and so forth and um so when they got when the guy came back for there, uh, you know the the vet or the the humane side called us like, hey, this guy wants his dog back. We're like, I'm sorry, the dog died. Dog didn't die. I mean, I have Ruby still. I mean, she fucking makes me throw the ball all day. For <laughs> what I'm saying is, it's like, sorry, the dog died. That guy's not getting that dog again. And matter yeah. of fact, I wish I would have seen his face because I'd have fucking ripped him up and down. You know what I mean? Hopefully, maybe it would have escalated, and I could have showed my mad skills. <laughs> Knee right his face to death. Well, you know, <laughs> my my dog. Uh, Maria, she was uh, used for breeding, and yeah. she was kept in a kennel where she could barely move around for six years. Yeah, you know. And at first, I I, I told Michelle, we don't have time for a dog. I, I you know, so the dog actually went to a friend of hers. Yeah, her friend started having issues where you know she really didn't have time for the dog or whatever, and yeah. she was going out of town one weekend, and she asked if we could you know watch her. And and I was like, yeah, we can we can do a weekend. Uh, dude, it's a trap, bro. <laughs> this I got all my dogs. It, it was, hey, you gonna foster? Can you watch my dog hey, real hey. quick? Failed. Failed. It, it was. A, I mean, it was the weekend, but I was so sad when that dog left. Yeah. And then it's I almost did, like when Tiny when you borrow uh, I'll borrow <laughs> when you watch Chris's dog. Tiny. Chris, you look so angry over there. No, I'm just watching. I'm. I've got issues that I'm trying to fix over here. So it's with the stream. Yeah. You oh. do your thing. I love you. Oh, I love you too. Okay, just make sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, hey, hey, when I get cranky, bro, you know it's nothing personal. I'll give you a hug and everything at the end. No, no. Okay, just make sure. All right. Um, so, you know, I was sad when she left. And and then she started going out of town a little bit more. Yeah. And not having having less time for it. And she said that she was going to take it back to the Humane Society. And I'm like, Whoa, no. you already know. You already know what it's like over I there. I was like, nope. She's not going to the Humane Society. You tell her that we will keep her. Yeah. And at that time, it was like I went from not having time to basically, time. basically I'm going home early because uh, my dog can't be home alone. That I don't want to leave my my dog alone yeah, that, sure. that, that long. Like yeah. last night, you know, I was hanging out with the boys, yeah. you know, having a good time. But around 1230, I'm like, guys, I got to cut out. Yeah, it's like it's like having a perpetual child. I was time. I was a little tired. I mean, I could have kept on going. Yeah, They're, for sure. They were there until seven o'clock yeah. in the morning. Oh, I believe it. I know. I wanted to go out with you, man, but I had drill this morning. I was like, "Fuck, bro, there's no <laughs> way I could have woke up." It was a good time too because I would have been drinking uh, even more. And already, I got a camera so I can watch my dogs. Talk to them. Yeah. Catch uh, them when they're doing bad things. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> and then I was yeah. trying to watch, and all of a sudden the camera wouldn't work anymore. Did they knock it off. Molly either chewed it or broke it 
running through it because I had it on the table and she runs uh, underneath the table. Yeah. So it was the wire was completely cut. So I fixed that this morning mm-hmm. and I was like, "Son of a bitch." That was the picture you sent me. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, "Yeah, one, the army taught me something good. I can splice wires." I'm yeah. Like, oh, I mean, I know, I know, my dog is just on the couch chilling, you know, and sleeping because that's that's her favorite thing to do. Yeah. But still, you know, I want to I want to get home and you know make make sure that she's not feeling you know lonely, you know, and I, I I feel guilty when I leave her alone for more than five hours. It's like, man, I gotta get home. Yeah, it's distracting when you start. Th- you're like, yeah. I gotta get home. I mean, he knows. You know, if like if, I gotta get home, I gotta let the dogs out. Yeah, I mean, uh, and, uh, in the past, you know, when I was still living with Michelle, you know, she was there. She looked after. Her, yeah. Cool. How about? But you know, now that she's gone, she's moved away. It's just, do? it's just me. Yeah. So I sure. can't, I can't rely on. She'll be okay. Yeah. I, I, it's, I feel guilty. So. Night. You know what's cool about having a small dog? Not that there's many things that's cool about having a small dog. Speaking of guys, I have two small dogs now, and we'll talk about that in a second. <laughs> the cool thing is about having a small dog is you can bring that motherfucker places. And people don't really like, like when I have my Rottweilers, I can't bring them everywhere because yeah. people are like. Ah! They start going across the street. I'm like, yo, bitch, he's friendly. What's the matter with you, man? <laughs> yeah. And then they're like, ah, it's a Rottweiler. My, my, my friend was eaten by a Rottweiler. My, your friend was not eaten by a Rottweiler. He was 200 pounds. I was like, there's no such thing as a 200 pound Rottweiler. It's called a fucking Mastiff. <laughs> I was like, or a bear. I was like, or, yeah. or that Rottweiler was so fat. And I'll tell you right now, I had, I had two Rotties, right? Two, two full bread Rotties. And, uh, Buster was about 135 pounds at his, uh, at his heaviest. And he's like, it's a big boy. And Guinness was about 145 pounds, but he was kind of fat. I'm sorry. If they're that big, how can they run after someone? Exactly. You know what I mean? So I was like, mm, I don't know, man. So when people tell me, like, oh, yeah, man, I got a German rat. He's 200 pounds. I'm like, what makes him a German Rottweiler? You got him in America, right? He's born in America. That's an American Rottweiler. He's like, no, it's a German rat. They're shorter and they're stockier. I'm like, no, bro. <laughs> a German Rottweiler is born in Germany. An American Rottweiler is born in America. There's no, no. fucking difference. And I keep hearing about these King Rotties. That's just a Mastiff mixed with a Rottie. It's a mutt. That's what that is. So let's clear all that shit up. Yeah. Anyways. So, yeah, I got two dogs now. So I got my mom's dog as well. So I got a, I got a Dachshund as well. A little long-haired uh, Dachshund named Guinevere. Name? Guinevere. Guinevere. Yeah. Is she getting along with George and uh, Oh, fucking George. Dude, George is so chill, bro. We oh, by the way, no, he's not. No, 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 he didn't no. like that. He's a murderer. Dog. No, listen, he is so chill. He is this dude is so chill. Yeah, ask Bert. Bert, yeah. tell him. Yeah, absolutely. I walked in the house, and this first thing he did was just like love on me. The other one wanted to play. George wouldn't leave my leg. He was like just he just like laid just his head me. on his leg. Just pet me. He's been so chill, bro. Although he did try to kill Elgato the other day. <laughs> Yesterday. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's <laughs> really true. Sc- well, it's critters, bro. Like critters. Like a cat's a critter. Like dogs, no. Though, he's good with small dogs. Like dogs, like his size, are trying to challenge him. He don't have, yo, oh, bro, he ain't he got, you know, he's like, nah, fuck that. Nah. So he's getting along with Guinevere? Hell yeah. Oh, it's a little dog. He's not threatened by her. What about Jack and Ruby? Jack, well, like, so this is what Jack does, that little shit. Jack is a, uh, is a rat terrier, right? So it looks like. I thought a- it was Jack Russell. It's a well, a rat terrier is like a Jack Russell Italian insane. greyhound mixed together. Okay. It's a rat terrier. Anyways, so Jack seems like he's good to go because he's not making any sound, but his lip is all curled and shit. Like he's gonna snap at that chick. Guinevere's a girl. Yeah. So I was like, God damn it, Jack! No, I don't hit him, but I'm like, no. You know, I kind of like make that motion towards him. He's like, huh. all right. But I changed their food, and all of my animals, like, all their muscles are starting to rip out, so I put them in high-protein food. So, like, Ruby's, like, all fucking yoked out and shit. She has, like, big old booty cheeks now, and she's, like, her chest is all muscular, and George is extra thick. Yeah, you, you, you mm-hmm. saw that, right? Yep. George is extra thick, and even Jack is just walking around a little, like, the little, you know the spike, the big bulldog yeah, and that yeah, other little. Tom and Jerry? Yeah, yeah, yeah the other little dog. That jumped, what are we going to do today, Spike? That's his he's like, son, yeah. Yeah, he's, like, he's like that dog, but, like. A little yolk version of it right now. It's funny because he has skinny legs. I started changing my dog's food. Yeah? Yeah, giving him actual, like, chicken and beef with vegetables and rice and sweet potatoes. Where, oh, so you're going kind of, like, just straight. Yeah, and that's yeah. good. I, I think that's good. Expensive as fuck, but that's good. No, not really. It's not, uh, like, crock-potting at all, and then I have a big... Word. Like... How much is it costing you a month? I just this, started. This is important for people I just that started. Have animals. Um... Oh, well, so I wanted yeah, to compare it to a, see. I got a small dog, so yeah. And I have two pit bulls. Polys. Here. No, they're not all pit. 
Buddha's, Mix. Buddha's a black mouth cur mix. Okay. And then Molly's a pit boxer. But, I mean, they're about 70 pounds. Yeah. So I'm going to see um, how much that costs. But it's it's healthier. Yeah. I think it is healthier for sure. And uh, I'm interested in seeing how much it costs because I can tell you right now a big bag that I run through about one, maybe a half a month. Um, you know, they're 70, they're $70 bags, $60 bags. Yeah. Oh yeah. You get expensive the expensive food. stuff. I yeah, get the pedigree, yeah. which is like 25 bucks for, I think it's a 50 pound bag. Yeah. So I can't, I can't do the cheap and ones, man, because they start getting well, all That's usually weird. about three weeks. Maybe it'll last me. Yeah. That sounds about right. So yeah, about a bag and a half. Bag, I started, I, I switched her food from dry. I went to wet cause she was having stomach problems. You had to like brush her teeth now, huh? What do I mean? Because the wet food, man, it causes a lot more tartar. She's oh. not a chewer either. No, I, I guess I got to do that. But I got this this thing for her, and she it's supposed to be like a toothbrush. Yeah. And she went on it. I'm yeah. like, bitch, I got it for you. The small little dogs <laughs> don't do that shit, man. They don't do that. I'm like, come on, bite, bite on this shit. And she's like, eh. She's like, nah, man. So I, I, I switched it to, to wet food and putting a little uh, pumpkin in it and mixing it. So I put like a tablespoon now of... Uh, of just the, the canned meat and tablespoon of uh, the pumpkin and mix it all in. And hey, sure, when you go today to go check out Costco, go look at their uh, – because that's where I get tinies, and I've showed him they have that yeah. loaf. It's wet food. Yeah, the, Walmart has that. I actually get a little speaks. bit of – I get a little one of that for Rocky, my sugar glider. Yeah. Well, I, they but sell the same thing. They sell a box of it at Costco for like six, six it- of them for – like 20 bucks is a sugar glider kind of like a little monkey it's a little it's a, flying like a squirrel. squirrel what it's a squirrel yeah. kind of it's a marsupial it's more like a rare it's a marsupial it has it's a little a marsu- pouch man i don't like you ever put your finger in your, i don't in like little squirrels this is a boy right so he, a boy don't have a pouch he doesn't have a pouch oh fuck and, squirrels and so fuck fun is that? so check it out robbie sent me this He's picture right here yeah. and he says i used to have three he says what kind of bite sting does this look like and i just told him aids <laughs> AIDS don't bite. <laughs> it's AIDS. No, nah, you should have uh, said like a snake or something. Snake AIDS. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. What do you want me to tell? I don't know. I can't tell. It's just like, it looks weird. T- tell him that looks like, you know, like a dick mark. Apparently he got pounded. On his arm? That's so horrible. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Look, we have a wiener. Get it? <laughs> this is the dog right here. Hey guys, did you see that? No, you probably can't see that. Look, she's looking up. She's I know, I've seen her. Yeah, what, did, what did Robbie say that they, the guy he was rolling with the other day he thought he was? He, what did he think he was a brown belt? Or oh, oh, so Robbie went out there to Houston and he went to a school, and uh, I guess the guy forgot his black belt and put on a purple belt. And Robbie was like, "Okay, cool. You know, he's he's my you know my level, so I'll be all right." I guess the guy wrecked him, and after afterwards he was like shaking his head and. Come to find out, the guy was a black belt who, again, forgot to take his black belt in school and yeah. just grabbed, yeah. the, just grabbed yeah, the purple I, belt. I talked to Robbie about that, too. He told me about all his roles and stuff like that. And he said, he said, uh, yeah. They that, got 12 black belts where he's going to be training. Yeah, he says wow. that last purple yeah. belt at the end was was a beast. He's like, I put him in some heel hooks and just kind of like see how he worked from there. He's like, but he was like, dude, he he like wrecked him. And he was like, you're going to have fun here. And he's like, what do you mean? He's like, we have 12 black belts at the school alone. Yeah. I was like, word. I'm so happy awesome. for him. I can't wait till we have 12 black belts at our school. That's going to be super dope. Man, that's going to be like. Well, you guys will be the black belts. <laughs> that's how it'll be. Bro, Get listen. ready. Black belt one, black belt two, black belt three, listen, black belt four. I, I'm, I've been at Purple Belt for three years this June. Okay? And. Once you're ready for brown, you'll be brown. Listen. Listen to me. Once you're ready for black, you'll be can, black. Can I, can I finish my goddamn story? I'm just letting you know. I'm just saying. Let me tell you my goddamn story. Tell me a story, brother. What are you going to do when Wallow comes and tells a story on you? So, listen. I, I've been at Purple Belt for almost three years. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, I've seen Purple Belts that have been maybe a year and a half, and they already have three stripes on their purple. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, what the fuck? What am I doing? That, you know? Doesn't it not fuck with your head when you see that? No, it doesn't fuck with my head. It just makes me wonder. I just remember I I I oh, really, a I'm not I'm, not, I'm a three year blue belt so I know I'm not comparing myself to anybody else but I see it and I'm like hmm that's interesting you know because again I'm I'm on my own journey I don't give a fuck about anybody else's I mean I do give a fuck if it's our teammates I, I, you know I'm <laughs> a, I, yeah kind of yeah if it's yeah, our teammates yeah. we care I mean and I mean I I care for, about most people yeah I want to say ninety percent there's there's a 
10% of people that I'm like, eh, whatever. Yeah. But, you know, and I, and of course I want them to do well in their journey. For sure. And, uh, but, you know, at the same time, it's like, hey, I'm not comparing myself to you. You know, I'm uh, I'm on my own shit. Yeah. But I see that and, and it just makes me wonder. I'm like, are you that fucking good that damn fast? Really? Well, you know, some people, they're, they're able to put that amount of time in where, where they are. You know what I mean? And then also, like, you have to also kind of like – there's so many factors when judging bell rank. And it's such a subjective thing depending that on is who true. you are. That it, is true. It, it's I very subjective not. depending on who you, who you are, right? Um, some instructors only do by uh, testing. Like, do you know all these technical moves? Cool. Some are like, yeah, that's great. Uh, but can you apply it? You know, and like you had to do so well in certain tournaments. And some instructors are like, yo, no. Do you have the technical knowledge? Could you teach this stuff? Now, I believe all three are super, super important, right? Being able to, one – do the move technically on a willing opponent. That's great. So that way you show you know the move. Being able to apply it, which is actually what your game is, right? So like maybe you know all the different guards, but really only butterfly guard and spider guard is your game. You know what I mean? Uh, and so you can apply that so you're at that level in value. And that's another thing too. I'll go back to that. And then and then being able to teach it, right? So like and that's that's the part most people don't get to. Most people, like, they intuitively learn it and apply it, right? But they can't teach it. And that's a whole other skill. And some people have all three, which is great. Um, and some people maybe can teach it but can't apply it as well as they, they you know, can show it. I can't. Does that make sense? I can't teach so, it. So, I mean, like, so, like, it's one of those so, – somebody's usually missing at least one of those things. You know what I mean? So, that's why it's really hard to get all three. But anyways, to go back to uh, – what was I going to say? I was going to go back uh, to. Second point. Know. Practical application. Practical application, right? Just because you can practically apply it doesn't mean that like you're you're necessarily that belt rank in a lot of people's eyes. Because you're like, okay, if I shut down that game, now you can't you can't advance any further, right? Because you only know that game. So that's yeah. But so, you know, so, so that's where it gets subjective. That's yeah. where it gets subjective. You're like, well, I fucked that dude up. Uh, he sucks. We're like, well, well, that guy fucks up ninety percent of the other people. But the way that your game builds against his game, yeah, you fucked him up. And like, so I'm gonna use an example of me and my buddy Brandon, right? Brandon Colbroth. As we were coming up, there's a certain guy I would fuck Brandon up, and then, or I'd fuck somebody else up, and then certain guys, Brandon, he's like, I can't do shit with him. Or it'd be the opposite. Like, I couldn't do shit with that guy, and Brandon would just run through him. I'm like, bro, I do so well against you, but I can't do shit to him and you just fuck him up. How does this work? So you can't necessarily say, it, like I said, it is subjective. So you can't necessarily say, that, you know, Brand's at a certain level, I'm at a certain level, this other dude is at a certain level. So it's just, it's just, it's tough. It's your own, like you said, it's your own journey. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like throw in you, injuries and it's gonna... And then throw in injuries and like, I've had a catastrophic injuries from the, since a white belt. So what I mean? So, so me be able to do things that I do at, at, at our level is, is pretty amazing. But imagine like a healthy person going through that same adventure and should should be able to do better than me. Should be able to do. And I'm just using me as an example because it's it's easy. But like same situation with somebody else. Does that make sense? Yes. The, the, well, it I, does. Did I get convoluted there? No. I, I hear what you're saying. Okay. So like, you know, you can't say, hey, you know, this guy who's only been – he's a – a year and a half to blue, you know, made purple belt a year and a half later. So he's only three years in. He's already got purple belt. And then like two years later, he made brown belt. You know what I mean? And then he's a black belt at seven, eight years. What the fuck? I've been doing this for 10, 11, 12, 13 years, whatever it may be. Uh, how is he better than me? You know what I mean? It's no, just, I wasn't well, saying that no, that, no, that no. person was better. I'm I was not. Just, I'm just saying like I was just, how just, is he better or not as good as me? I was well, just wondering how, how you, you know – they were able to advance to, that that quickly in in their ranking, you know. To it his all depends point, to having like, three stripes on their purple within a year, year and a half. To Wallace's point, I have a, a friend who got their blue belt a little bit before me. Now they're a purple with two or three stripes, and I'm sitting there like, and I wreck them like. Yeah. So it's oh, it's boy. kind of the same. Hold on, we we have a call. Hello. Speak now forever. Hold your peace. Yeah, I'm just calling up. Um, I'm, I'm terribly offended by what you people say. That y'all just ignorant. Wait, yeah. Listen, check this no, out, no. man. You know what? You know what about? Um, it's totally okay to be offended. It is. Yeah, we're no, no, y'all, y'all. You know what? Y'all motherfuckers need Jesus. 
Because yes, it's, ignorant. It's totally okay to be offended. I think yeah. a lot of people think that it's not okay to be offended. Yeah, you can be offended. Like, we like, don't give a like, fuck. You know, I'm offended, <laughs> so you need to shut up, right? So that's how that works. But like, no, no, you can stay offended, but we're just gonna stay talking. Yeah. <laughs> let, the let, First Amendment doesn't mean. Yeah, I know you can say whatever the fuck you want, but you don't mean you don't that's have right. consequences. And we will. So that's the fir- that's the First Amendment that says that, and the Second Amendment helps me back that shit up. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Chick chop, make you wanna click clout. Uh, oh, that's excessive, offensive. Uh, excuse offensive. me, ma'am, ma'am, can, can you tell us what your name is? Uh, my name's Wanda. Wanda. What's yours? Well, Wanda, why don't you go fuck yourself? Whoa! What? Why did you say fuck yourself? I was gonna p- do a play off the name Wanda Vagina. How about that? Take your ass to China. <laughs> Uh, no, we got haters. We got haters. <laughs> yeah, man. Hey, you're always gonna have haters. That means you're doing something okay. Yeah. Some people might be obsessed with you, and that's okay too. I'm a, I'm <laughs> offended. Like, I'm offended. You can be obsessed with me. That's totally fine. You know, if you concentrate just on me, you're gonna miss out on your own shit. I'm offended that you he, that on he your thought own that shit. you know that he was and so. Don't okay. worry about me. Yeah. That's just you called know? a fan, bro. That's all yeah. that is. Is that what a fan is? The one that fucking stalks your page even though you have them blocked? Yep. I'm offended that you thought I'd give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's, that, it, it's funny, man. And then it goes back to what I was saying earlier as far as like what's really, really important in life, man. These people that are going to be trying to oppress you with this negative feelings and stuff like that. Like, no. You know who you are. You know what, you, what your goals are. Work better to be a better person and then move the fuck on. They're going to try to hurt you, whoever they may be. They might try to hurt you. That's okay. <laughs> they can try. As long as you know, as long as you, as as you know what's Thank up. You. you know what I mean? Move the fuck on. It's okay. Yeah, I don't know. That voice sounded awful familiar, though. Yeah? Yeah. Sounded what pretty you, familiar. What do you sound like? I don't know. Somebody needs to come back and spar a little more, is what it sounds like. Oh. <laughs> Damn. Thanks. Um, well, if 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 that person is who you think it is, maybe you should take. What the fuck was that? That would a be text me. message. Oh, they're texting you. I know, right? I mean, like, I'm coming <laughs> back to sparring. I'm coming home. Anyway, guys, uh, it's uh, almost three o'clock. We have to go because there's. So there's... Robbie says cool. So Natalia has AIDS. I'm like, oh no. Anywho. it's almost three o'clock. We gotta go. We gotta cut this short today. Before we go, give a shout out to our sponsors. Hey guys, I just want to say thank you to Black Hive Tattoo for all the dope ass tattoos. I just had a session the other day. My buddy Chris came and sat with me. Um, it was an amazing experience. What do you think about that, Chris? Yes. <laughs> Adam, Adam. <laughs> it was dope. So blackhivetattoo.com. Sign up to their newsletter. That's how you get on. Blackhivetattoo.com. That's how you sign up to their newsletter. So that way you know which artist is open at certain times and, and that way you can get some work done. Uh, the other one is Lean Impact Nutrition. Super stoked to have Lean Impact Nutrition in my life. Makes my my day-to-day so much easier. As crazy, busy, packed my life is, it's impossible for me to, to prep the way that I need to to uh, stay as, as fit and sexy as I am. Don't choke, bro. It's okay. So, thank you. Thank you, Lean Impact. Bert, anything else you want to add? Uh, No, I'm just glad to be here today. All right, cool. Yeah. Sherry, any, any shout-outs? No, not today. Not today? All right. Uh, El Senor, uh, Chris, anything you want to say? Anything you want to add? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, thank you very much for listening. We appreciate your support, and uh, we'll catch you next week. Peace. Peace.